Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. I'm just letting my car quickly warm up here at a location near where I'm staying at the minute um, before I drive over to a friend's house who's got all the kit to install this. Now, today's video is going to be a bit of a learner and an instructional so I'm learning as I go along. I'm just following the instructions. You'll be learning on as you go along with me. So basically, I'm a complete newbie when it comes to mechanical stuff. I know a lot of stuff about cars when it comes on paper. Mechanically, I have no clue. So. Um, it'll be good to get working on this. Uh, it's basically a go fast bits blow valve. Why would I want to upgrade my blow valve and, and install it? The reason is because I'm going stage two. If you're going stage two or higher and even planning on having a hybrid turbo or whatever, you're running so much more pressure that the OEM blow off valve slash recirc valves will crack eventually. That's not to say they'll crack straight away, but they are prone to cracking on these cars. So make sure that you do upgrade it, but it's not a necessity to start with. Um, Another thing about these uh, research dump blow valves, we've got all these different names, is the fact that people don't like them because they make that sound as you come off throttle, but when you come back on throttle, you lose all that boost now because you've entered it. Now with this one, uh, you can choose how much boost you vent uh, or how much pressure you vent and how much you recirculate back um, through the system. Now I'm going to stick with the standard preset, which is 60 recirc 40 vent that's what they recommend go fast bits the, the australian dudes um and they recommend that for all the cars that they've actually worked this with and uh, developed this for um i will stick with that because i don't want to be losing boost pressure whilst going off the and coming back on um you won't really feel it because the turbo on these cars is so small uh, on the Ford Focus STs, anything like a Ford Focus ST spec or lower in terms of power and horsepower and newton meters and all that sort of stuff, it's it's so low that the, the, the turbo is so small that you sh they say you won't really feel it. It'll be negligible. I'm very sensitive to this sort of stuff, so I will feel it because I'm very like bothered about losing pressure and being able to be less quick sort of thing. But it's only temporarily until I go stage two, um, and I will get a nice. Tss hissing sound whilst changing gear although it won't be as loud as if i vent all of it 40 percent vent is still pretty loud so i'll do it before and after um and you get to see all the process that i'm doing with this to make sure that i can install this i'm going to my friend anthony's uh he lives in mapperwell uh where i normally live but i'm staying at my girlfriend's house at the minute so in Ireland. so i've got to drive over there and we'll get this set up um last thing i will say is uh this well all my equipment i'm getting to be fair is coming from Car Enhancements UK. They are really good, they've got so much stuff on there, especially for Fords, and also Demon Tweaks are good. Give them a shout out as well, because Demon Tweaks and Car, Enhan Car Enhancements UK, they are pretty good for this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. The next time you see me, I'll be at Anthony. <laughs> Right, so the first thing you need to do is get your car up on jack stands and take the wheel off. And make sure it's on the right side, that's the driver's side for us in England. You go past the brake discs and the brakes, it's past the ball joint and it's literally just in front of you, that little silver bit with the black disc in the middle. Right, so as you can see, the job itself is quite fiddly, but once you get past the brake discs and you get past the ball joint, you will be met with the recirc valve. There's a silver metal bracket on there. You will need some forceps or something that you can pinch down on a clamp on um, to make sure because there's two clamps. So you can remove them, then proceed to take the Allen, uh, Allen screws off and then eventually be able to take the bracket off and take the stock recirc valve out. It says to pull there the vacuum hose which is there off now there's two clamps there's a white one and a black one that you'll find um, you want to make sure you undo both of them what you do is you pinch them in so the clamps you basically squeeze squeeze the clamps to take them off and then this just pops out then when you install the other one you just slot it back on you clip these down push it push it across as far as it goes to make sure it's on tight and let go and it'll clamp it back down now we need to get the uh, the allen screws <laughs>
long time. By the way, this will not take 35, 40 minutes like it's claimed. This will take about two and a half hours for you to do. So far we're about an hour and 15 minutes through. And here's your factory diverter valve. There we go. Look at that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm high on doing something to my car. Um, now we get your new one. Now, this has been packaged really nicely, I have to say. This new one. Um, you can see there where you can you can alternate on the spring up here, adjustment with the Allen key, decide how much blow off you want. Um, over to the bit now where we've put it back on. So you get three screws with this. The short one needs to go in first at the bottom right here, underneath the mount, which is this metal plate here. Other YouTube videos don't describe this and instruct this, but you need to make sure you put the screw in first to the blow off valve. You put it onto the static bracket that's already on to the mount point. You then tighten the screw just a little bit so it holds. Then you put this metal bracket on top and put in the other two screws that are the tall ones there. Then you obviously connect your vi uh, vacuum line like so, push it on all the way. Once it's on, you try and get these clips here onto it by squeezing them. They open and push them on there to make sure they don't slip off. Then it should be ready. And yeah, as you can see, the factory bypass valve is quite flimsy. It's made of plastic and rubber, and it just doesn't compare to the quality of the GFB research slash blow valve. Just to show you, once I've changed it, there are no warning lights, so you don't have to worry about those. Let's get over to the next clip and see what it actually sounds like. So I've had the car now with the blow valve for a full day and I've got to say I'm so impressed with it. Um, there is definite instant response from gearing from second or third, um, or first to second or second to third for example. Um, it feels more an A because the turbo doesn't have nowhere near as much of a lag if, if any at all. Um, especially at the higher RPMs there's just instant response on the throttle which is incredible. Um, I have noticed, um, and also the drive factor of the car, it's much smoother around town at lower RPMs, there isn't as many jolts when you're gearing, you know, there isn't that big jolt, so I have to say thank you to Anthony for providing me with the tools, the jack, the jack stands, everything else, or the axle stands, to help me fit it, and also keep your company and going through it with me, and checking out what I've done. I'm no mechanic by all means, neither is he, um, but he knows certainly a lot more than I do, so um, definitely impressed. Now I'm just going to come off a roundabout onto a dual carriageway, oh there's a red light, there's always a red light, always, damn it, but we'll just see how it, well it shifts through gears. having an amazing day yourselves out in the beer garden with beer booze barbecue takeaway whatever it is that you guys are doing i hope you're having a solid day stay safe take care and please like comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the content take care guys